Hi, everybody. Welcome to my weekly live bullet journal setup. If you are here in the live chat, let me know you can hear me with some emojis. And if you are here on the replay, let me know that you're here in the comments of the chat so that I know that you came by to watch. As you can see, there's been a lot going on in my house this week. And today's video is going to be both a weekly setup and a setup of a decluttering spread, which is going to actually be a little bit more than what I thought it was going to be originally, which I will explain in a hot second here. Let's just make sure everything is working. Oh, looks like you guys can hear me. It's also RJ's birthday today. So happy birthday, RJ. He's not even in here because he's playing video games because he's 15. <laughs> yeah. So let me finish cleaning my glasses off because I'm a professional. Okay. So Anyway, I'll talk about the boxes in a hot minute, though. but first I am going to head over to my bullet journal because I really want you guys to see how it got filled up with this time tracking spread. I love the way this looks. I remember telling you guys it is from Yukiri Studies on Instagram, and this shit just, I am so glad that I did not add a bunch of color to it because I feel like this is plenty of color. And I feel like I did a really good job kind of sticking to when like my priorities, I had somebody ask that whether or not like it would matter that I didn't write down what any of these things were, but because I can see the different tasks that got done that day and what colors are associated with them, as well as the tasks I've been working on, on my Alistair method list, it gave me enough information to kind of hold myself accountable. All right. I love these colors, Debbie. I, they are not, I love green. It's one of my favorite colors, but it has not been one of the colors I tend to use in my bullet journal as much. So I love how this looks anyway. So yeah, I'm loving this. I'm basically going to recreate this layout for this week, except I did the thing that I hated and I did it anyway, which was the Alistair method with the tasks going with Monday being closest to the finish line versus Sunday. I don't, so I'm just going to flip task these two things and then flip these two things, but I think I'm going to leave the rest of it the same and not worry about it too much. But before I do that, I need to work on my, my decluttering spread. All right. So this is some notes for a course I'm working on right now. And then Here's where I'm going to put the decluttering spread. So, um, I made a list of all of the different areas in the house and, um, and divided them up into like smaller areas. Cause like the kitchen is like a big situation, but if you divide it up, then that's different. And I also made a list of, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So originally I just wanted to be able to cross things off when they got decluttered. However, we, uh, however, when we, de when we talked to our real realtor, this, uh, Heather, if Heather's in the comments, I'm still paying attention to it. Um, <laughs> when I talked to our realtor this past week for staging our house, she talked about how what we want to do is pack up the things that we want to move with us to Denver, but that we don't need for the next couple of months so that there's le the less stuff in the house to make it more clean when it's staged, the better, which is why there were so many boxes because I have to take, I just redid my office and I basically have to take about half of it out. So all of those things are things I won't be using in the next couple of months. I have severely truncated my art supplies because I have a couple projects I'm going to be working on. I just kept the bare minimum of what I needed for those and everything else is packed up and we're going to put it in storage until the house sells and we move and then it'll all just get loaded onto the truck as is. So that's why I have the boxes. So the idea I have for this decluttering spread is just a bunch of lists, but then to have like the standard bullet journal dot with like each thing next to it. And when it's been decluttered, check it off. And then when it's been packed, cross the whole thing off. So if they get both get done at once, that's one thing, but it'll give me the opportunity to see like, what have I gone through, but haven't packed up yet. Do you know what I'm saying? Because now we need to get both of those things done. Originally it was going to be not packing until we were moving, but hearing that we are like, okay, well we have to pack while we get the house ready to sell. So we might as well do it um, right the first time. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to grab an O5. What happened with the washi declutter? It's still in the garage. I'm going to do something with that, but that's, I'm working on the garage this next weekend. This weekend I wound up finishing the office up. So don't worry. The garage will be on there, Jessica. <laughs> All right. So 
what I counted for myself was 24 squares, 12 wide. So I have four columns here and I have several different areas. I have, we don't have a very big house, but we do have, so we have two different bathrooms. We have a linen closet, a closet with wine in it that I'm not handling the wine, but I am going to be handling the other stuff that's in it. Living room, our bedroom, the kitchen, the dining room, which is part of the kitchen, but it's sort of its own. So we'll, I'm just dividing it up. Uh, the garage. And then we have both kids' rooms, Jesse's desk and my office, which are not divided up here because I'm not handling those. I'm just going to be giving support as need be. And this is mostly for my reference, not because Jesse's not going to fucking look at this. He'll just ask me if he wants to know where we should be next. Ooh, hi from London. All right. And from Australia, good times. Yeah. So I made a little, I kind of tried to figure it out ahead of time so it wouldn't take me that long. So we'll start here with master B R. I'm kind of doing the same situation that I did on this layout just because I like the way it looks. And then well, this one will be master bath. And then there's going to be more underneath them. I'm just trying to get the top situations figured out. And then we have my Valhalla garage. <laughs> and then the other, the other big puppy, the kitchen. Although I was telling my patrons when we were on our hangout a few minutes ago that my kitchen's actually not going to be quite as bad as I thought because um, we had to declutter so much of it moving into this house because our kitchen is so miniature. The next time we move, I will likely have more kitchen shit because we're hoping to get a big, like one of the our musts on our house list is a bigger kitchen, which is not going to be that hard because our kitchen is, I think only people in New York have smaller kitchens in their apartments necessarily, like small apartments. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Or maybe not. Okay, whatever. No, don't say that. Um, Sarah, thank you for the super chat, Sarah. Extra packaging so you can keep a little extra. So I'm just going to start here and work my way down and then add to them because I don't want to start writing like I'm going to do the kids' bathroom under here. I don't want to overshoot my wad until I've like gotten the stuff written in. Sure. Are you okay there, Jess? Mm -hmm. You just choked. Mm, don't know what you're talking about. All right. So where is it? So our bedroom, which is one of the big ones. All right. So I have my little list. So I'm going to do, so what I'm going to do is give myself a dot and then write the actual thing down. And that's going to be the way I'm doing it. Why are we moving Evelyn? Uh, it's work related for Jesse. Valhalla is a feasting hall. Debbie, I was mostly thinking about it in the way that like the Led Zeppelin sings about it. So I probably <laughs> might not have been using that correctly. <laughs> All right, so we've got um, my nightstand. And like I'm breaking this down really granularly because you, you guys, a lot of you are planner and list makers. You know that having more things to check off could be motivating. So we have the nightstands um, under the bed which I'm going to let Jesse mostly handle because I'm pretty sure that it's his shit. What now? Under the bed. Oh yeah, it's just like a couple guitar cases. Okay. And then the bookshelves, which I will be doing this week. I will be going through and getting rid of, I have three Ikea Billy bookcases in my bedroom attached to the wall, and I have committed to getting rid of one Billy bookcase's worth, so one third of my books. 
We'll see how that goes. But I'm going to film it so you'll get to watch me in my pain. Do you think our house will sell fast? We think so. That's the hope. It's going to be in a good price range for our area. And then we have, um, we have clothes drawers in our dresser, which are mostly decluttered anyway, but we already, at least Jesse and I both went through them relatively recently before we knew we were going to move. But then I have my makeup drawer, which I really need to empty out because I need to move all of the makeup that's on my dresser because I use it as a vanity into that drawer. So it's not on there. Um, and then my meds drawer, because that's, that's probably going to just need a little bit of dealing with. And then we have the, uh, top dresser. Oh, the top of the dresser. I was like, what the fuck? What? When you can't understand what the hell you wrote. And then we have the closet, closet shelf. above the closet, which is a cupboard. And that is our bedroom. Alrighty. We prepared for a weather change. Yeah. We did do a lot of fixing. How do the kids feel about it? The kids are feeling pretty good about it. They're excited for an adventure. I know that cats into like a change. I will be talking more about, um, I will be talking more about, uh, that the, the, the custody situation in an upcoming video. It's just not the time yet. Really talk about that. Um, Debbie, have we checked listings for houses in our price range? Oh yeah. We've been, we've working with a realtor in, in Denver already. And she has this on a portal, like meant like for our location specifications. And we've been looking at a lot of houses. There have been houses we have seen that we would buy if we were there right now. Um, all right. So master bathroom is not here. So under the sink, it's a very small bathroom. There are only three real sections to deal with under the sink, under the bridge. Why am I? The song that's popping into my head by the Red Hot Chili Peppers is other side, not under the bridge. It's a totally different song. How long, how long will I slide? When under the bridge is bigger than near, 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 near. Sometimes I feel like, oh my God, I'm going to be moving out of my red hot chili peppers, no doubt in sublime state, although I'm not in Southern California. So it's not really a thing. Okay. So now that I've got the master bath, I haven't listed to put anything underneath my bedroom because it was one of the bigger categories. So we'll see what else I want to add here. But in the meantime, I am going to now put the kids bathroom, which is basically the same thing, except they each also have their own. They each also have their own drawer in their bathroom. One thing we're hoping for with the new house is for the bathroom for the kids, potentially having two Van it like two like a double sink. Most of the houses we've been looking at in Denver have double sinks for the master bathroom, but we're hoping to find one with double sinks for the kids bathroom just because they're teenagers and they're both nasty. So they should each have their own space to be nasty. But technically they have more sink space than Jesse and I do. Their bathroom is bigger than ours. So bathtub under sink. Cat drawer, RJ drawer, and their stuff needs to get done by them because it's their shit, but they are only with us half the time, so we don't have as much time with them to work on it as we do for ourselves. Medicine cabinet. What am I looking at here? Do you get to go out and, oh, so Mari asks, do you get to go out and visit the houses in person before you have to choose one? Um, 
Uh, yeah, we're going to make a trip out there in late April, most likely. Will I donate the books I am not keeping? Yes. I don't even know. I'm sorry. I'm not keeping up very well with the comments. What about schools and doctors, etc.? I have all that in my moving binder, and we are waiting to finish getting the insurance stuff finalized before we start doing that. Um, Evelyn, yeah, it's many miles moving from uh, Napa, California to Denver. Okay, we'll go to the garage. Let me cross off the ones on my list once I've done them, just so I know that I've already done them. All right. So then we have the garagey. Which has, where are my lists? Megan, I'm sorry you weren't able to make it to the hangout, and I'm sorry for your loss, man. Okay, for the garage, we this is not going to be a very extensive list because the garage is full of crap, but the crap falls into some very broad categories. So we have appliances, because all of our kitchen appliances live in the garage because our kitchen is small. Cindy's shit, which is all of my work-related shit that lives in the garage. Jesse's shit which is now all of Jesse's work-related shit that lives in the garage. Uh, the laundry area. And then we have the um, holiday decor. Camping shit. All other shit. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of shit in the garage. Liz, I am really glad. I love my office setup. It was kind of breaking my heart like over excuse me, over the past few days to be dumping everything out of drawers and into boxes. <laughs> uh Jessica, it's not going to be entirely different insurance. It's just going to be a different state of the same kind of insurance, but it's um uh, if you, it's Kaiser, so there will be some hiccup to change over, but, um, not too much. I don't think. Yeah, we have camping gear, Jessica. Uh, Kara, the custody is changing. The kids are going to be with us as their primary residence. And I've, I've said before, and I'll keep saying, I'm going to talk more, go into more detail on that in a upcoming video, but right now it is not, we, the, the decision has just been made. So there's still a lot of feelings going on. So, uh, we're gonna wait for a little bit before we talk about that. All right. So what else am I putting here? The living room, which actually we recently, we recently like reorganized the living room and removed a bunch of stuff. So That's exciting. Is Jesse going to have to go before the move? No, I think we are going to be out there before most people because there's other people who are moving as well. Uh, there's going to be a video of the moving binder coming up very quickly. So that's coming. Uh, where am I at? Living room. It's actually not very much. Living room is actually a pretty small situation. Uh, we've got bins, baskets, and the ottoman. There's also the, you know, the little thing that holds all of the entertainment center stuff. It's just a, like a little like console table that just has all of like the DVD player and the Jesse's receiver and all that. I'm not fucking touching the electronics. That's way more. That's above my pay grade. All right. And then I want to put the wine closet on here which is technically the coat closet, but it's one of the few places in the house that like, there's not a lot of space for storing things. And like this house is very kind of bereft. We've had to create a lot of storage in this house, but it's like the best place to store wine. So 
but I'm not dealing with the wine. We're not going to be bringing most of it. There's not a ton left in there. Jesse's been, um, like not getting as much wine as he usually does because he likes to collect up bottles, but he doesn't have anything that's super fancy and moving wine is, we're going to have to move whatever wine we take ourselves. And, uh, so he's trying to make sure it's not a ton. Um, did I see Nicolas Cage got remarried? I did not. That's cool. Um, what else do we see here? Is the goal of, so the goal of this spread, Jonathan, is this is not to pack to move, although it will be packing to move. This is to get through all, as, like basically what our realtor told us to do was to empty the house out of as much shit as we can. I had thought that I could do some decluttering and then start packing over the course of time. But now we kind of want to do all of this before we even put the house on the market. So the goal that hopefully means that when it is time to move, a lot of the pain in the ass stuff will have already been taken care of. So when this spread is completely checked off, we should be ready to list our house, you know, because in the meantime, Jesse's going to be making sure that the projects that have to get taken care of will get taken care of. I basically have about three to four weeks to pull this off. So it's going to be an interesting experience. Oh, you, oh, I haven't even, cause I've barely been on Instagram today, Jessica. I, par I posted a couple things, but didn't look at anything. So have I given any thought to finding a congregation that, yeah, actually I've looked at a couple. There's one that's actually pretty close to where we're going to be moving. That also looks to have a music program that I'm really interested in. So we shall see. Have I ever thought about doing merch clothes? I mean, it's occurred to me, but I don't know. I don't know if it would be, I don't know. I don't know if it, people would really give that much of a shit. I'm not sure. All right. So the kitchen is, I'm going to make a, these are basically like individual cupboards and drawers because I feel like that's going to be the easiest way to get through it, except for the pantry, which is huge. Pantry. Top. Of fridge, aka where random shit goes to die. Not like actually die, but you know, like there's always a couple of surfaces in your house that become like the place where, uh, like the no man's land, and the top of the fridge and the pass through are the two things that like are like that. Um, above fridge cabinets, and then we have the baking cabinet. which is not just baking stuff. There's other stuff in there, but that's basically how I think about it because it does have all of like the flour and shit. Eggplant shirts, Rebecca. <laughs> what about Jesse's band? He told the band they're sad, but they are happy for the opportunity for us. And since Jesse will have to come back to Napa on occasion, he plans to jam with them when he comes back. And I think that they're going to attempt to record an album the best that they can considering you know the coronavirus but a lot of they have these they're going to try and record another ep before they before he goes we'll see i don't think he realizes how much shit he's going to have to do but we'll see above the stove and then we have under the stove so I have heard rumor that the drawer underneath your oven is actually meant to be used for something, not just to store all of your sheet pans. Like the, I've always seen it as where you store your sheet pans, but I heard that you're actually supposed to be able to use that for something like cooking related. I just don't know what, maybe you guys can enlighten me Uh spice drawer. I love if there is one thing I'm going to have to figure out how to do in a non Ikea kitchen. If that kitchen that we get, if the kitchen we move into does not have Ikea cabinets, the one thing I really want to replace is my spice drawer. Having a really shallow drawer with those inserts in it and keeping your spices in the drawer has been like fucking game changing for me. And that's something I love about our house. When we might be a small kitchen, but we designed it ourselves essentials drawer which is basically the drawer that has like my measuring cups and my immersion blender and my uh, hand, like my uh, 
electric hand mixer, like things I use all the time in the kitchen, like the small appliances that are allowed to live in the kitchen live in the essentials drawer. It's a broiler to let dough rise. I did not know that. <laughs> uh, Tupperware drawer, AKA probably only slightly less stressful to declutter than my books. Why? I don't know. It shouldn't be that hard, but for some reason, I always think I might find the lid for that one day. And even though I know that it's not the business, dishes, silverware and utensils. Under the sink, under the sink, under the sink, under the sink, under the sink. Oh my God, my dots are going all wonk. And then mugs and glasses. Jesse is going to say that I need to get rid of my mugs and I am going to tell him that maybe he should get rid of his guitars if he's going to. He already tried to tell me I need to go through my washi and get through another half of it after I'd gone through the first half, like to get down to a quarter of what I originally had. And I told him to kiss my butt. So <sighs> yeah, the top of the oven broiler is the one that I use. We're probably going to either do a pod or a storage unit, most likely a pod, and it'll be in that. And then when the truck comes, we'll just have everything get put into the truck or whatever, or into the garage so the truck gets here. But the goal is that all of this packed up stuff should not be, um, all of the packed up shit should not be, uh, should not have to be unpacked to go onto the truck for Denver. It should just be done. Like all the stuff that's in my office boxes right now will stay in boxes until we move into the new house. Have I tried to declutter using the Marie Kondo method? That, you know, holding things and seeing if they give me joy, I, I have not been able to do that without feeling like a total jackass. So I don't think so. All right, so we're gonna do the linen. Got the burps. The ginger ale linen closet. Which is basically three sections. Linens, so my towels and extra sheets, lines, because I can spell, my bath and body works shelf which is my candles and hand soaps and the little wallflowers because Jesse promised me when we bought a house that I could outfit it with the smells I love so much. And I'm just going to try and use up as much as possible so I don't have to transport any of that. I'm on a buying moratorium from Bath and Body Works. Uh, Jeanette, we can't store everything in the garage, though, because they want to be able to see the size of the garage and the walls and stuff. So, yeah. Um, would I do a collaboration video with an organizer? Maybe, but I, I don't know. And then our board games live in the linen closet. So I just got to go through those. Pods probably will ship it to Denver. I just don't know if we want to, uh, if we want to pay that and pay the movers. Cause we want the movers to bring the boxes in just because I can't lift anything. And, um, so I don't know. We shall see. Okay. So what do I have left here? I have the others, the other things. I'll put those underneath my bedroom. The others. other shit okay so we have these are the ones i'm not really in charge of but i need to make sure get done and that would be jesse's desk not his work desk that's in the garage cat's room which I swear, I think just needs to be firebombed. RJ's room, which will probably be easier because he doesn't hoard craft supplies the way Kat does. 
and then my office. And the reason I'm not breaking my office down is because I knew when I was going to be creating this spread that I would have already done the majority of it. So I should be able, I don't think I can check it off because it's decluttered, but there are just a few more things I need to pack like that needs some different size boxes before I can say it's fully packed up for the, uh, for the selling of the house. So I, it's part of the way there. I did make some progress already. Look at that. And then the only other thing left I'm going to put under the kitchen is what we're referring to as the dining room. Although it's technically very similarly, it's basically the same room as the kitchen, but I'm just going to refer to it as the dining room. Booyah. It's basically just lists upon lists upon lists. And so the dining room is the Gorm, which is our big wooden shelf from Ikea that holds our microwave, our placemats, and a whole... And basically the things on it that matter are the microwave, the placemats, the box that has the alcohol wipes we use for like glasses, like our, our like screens and glasses, and cat's lactate, and then... Um, the air fryer and I think everything and then a couple of mementos I think everything else on there can go <laughs> um, the bins which are in the uh, the benches and then the pass through aka the junk drawer of my house except it's a surface <sighs> all right so there is the stuff that needs to be on this spread now before I get into my weekly, I just want to put a little bit of decoration on it because this is very, very basic. Now, what I'm going to do is write, like, get the house ready to sell up here. And I'm going to leave the bottom blank because I may need more space for other things as they come up. So. Let's start with the daffodil, shall we? RJ sounds like he's having some fun on his video games right now, and I am okay with that because it's his birthday. So we have a daffodil, and then we'll do another daffodil over here. We'll have this one be, let me see. Let me look at some of the other ones I've done. I kind of like the one that's looking downwards, so we'll do that. We'll do... Sounds like cats having their D&D &D session too, which is all well and good. We're going to try. One thing that's really important to us is to try and um, make sure that the kids have like a socially distanced little picnic with their friends before we go. Use washi to prove. I already packed all my washi. It's in a box. I have literally only kept out the Amanda Rachley neutrals because I felt like these ones were were bland enough and like neutral enough that if I needed washi tape, they would work in any situation. And then a bright orange one somewhere around here, like a Scotch washi bright orange one that I'm using to tape, um, to tape like bubble wrap closed and shit like that. Am I bringing my patio furniture? Yes, we're going to disassemble it because I fucking love that shit. And even though it wasn't super expensive, I am not going to be uh, buying new patio furniture when we found some patio furniture that we already love so much. Sorry, I'm like not paying hella attention to the comments right now because I'm just trying to get this done so that I can move forward with my weekly spread. Do to do, do drawing daffodils. Do 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 do. I can wipe my nose. I my nose is running. Ah. Uh, Will I put a spread of this on Instagram? Yeah, Barbara, I was playing on it like sometime this week. 
Yes, Rebecca, when I can talk about the, uh, when I actually am more able to talk about the custody situation, I will absolutely give you guys an idea. I mean, I can tell you a little bit of it now. I just can't talk a ton about it. It's not that I'm not allowed to, but it just, it's a, it's a big change for my kids. It's a big change for my ex and I, and since it's not just me that's involved with it, there's only so much I can really like tell you about at the moment that fee it just doesn't feel quite right to go into huge details about it, but I'll tell you a little bit. The kids got to make the decision. The kids, uh, the kids got to decide. We knew it was going to be one house as a primary resident because my ex-husband was already planning on relocating. He had already decided for other, for family related reasons that he and his wife are going to be relocating to Nevada. And so that was already when that conversation, like when the Denver conversation happened, this, it had already, this conversation had already begun. Um, so it wasn't a complete shock. If that makes sense. Oh, the patio furniture. You're right. I should, although we're not taking that with us yet. We're not packing the patio furniture up though. It's going to stay back there for the backyard. So this is all stuff that we, to make sure, but there might be stuff in the backyard that we need to pack. So I'll just add backyard to other stuff. There really isn't anything in the front yard, but thank you. Thank you for the heads up. All right, sell. This. still using the lettering style I've been using in this month. I'm just making it bigger and I'm using, and it's the size 12 Pigma Micron. I got these from the art supply store and they are girthy, my friends. So girthy. So this house. And then what we'll do over here is we'll grab this yellow. We'll go around here just to add a little color. And then we'll add a little green. And then what I'll do, because of all the yellow, is I'm just gonna take this and run it right under here, 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 here. And then we'll grab the yellow, here, here, here. There's no rhyme or reason. I'm just trying to alternate them for the color. And then down here, I'm not gonna put a whole flower down here because like I said, I wanna leave space to make sure that there's room in case I need to add anything. But instead what I will do is like I did in some of the other uh, spreads is just add a couple of these big tall leaves the big dandelion or dandelion fucking daffodil. I can, the big daffodil leaves down here. That's not what I want to do. Oh my God. This is becoming a hot mess here. That's okay. And then, where's that green? There. 
There we go. See? And that is the sell this house spread. I'm liking it too, Deb. I'm really enjoying it. All right. So this is my decluttering sell this house spread. This is not my full blown packing spread. Although my packing spread once it's time to move will probably look similar to this or I might adapt it depending on what I learn from this. But this is basically the next three weeks. I just need to get through all of this. Like today, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna handle my makeup, these three makeup drawer, meds drawer on top of dresser. Um, I have to refill my pills anyway, so it's a good time as any to like go through, get the top of the dresser cleared off, get the stuff moved into the drawers, get the stuff that's in the drawers it's getting rid of. You know what I mean? Like I should be able to get through a lot of the smaller ones quickly. It's gonna be the rest of them. That's gonna be the pain in the ass. All right, moving on. This is going to be my weekly spread, and it's basically going to be the same, just uh, with a couple of like small tweaks. I'm just going to get my cubby, my cutting mat out. I still can't believe that I kept a cutting mat and a knife because I'm cutting my bullet journal up. Like that is. Basically repeating this one with the little Dutch door situation because I'm going to do the same thing. I want to continue to look at my time in batches. All right, so got my little rotary cutter and can I see what I'm doing? Maybe, you know, it'll work better, I think. And I guess I'll show you guys maybe on Instagram stories. I'll show you kind of the way I've got, where did I put my ruler? I don't know. I just rearranged everything and didn't know where everything was. And now I had to rearrange it again. Basically that tall, that one drawer that has my printer on it is the drawer that I'm utilizing to, uh, keep all the stuff that I'm hanging on to. Everything else is going to go pack. All these other drawers are going to get packed up. Oh yeah. That, that's much nicer. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. How suave, I tell you. How suave. Best use for a ruler ever. Okay, let's put this now. Where did I put it? I don't know where anything goes. And I don't want to label it because, you know, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna be keeping things like this. Yeah, manageable units, exactly, Barbara. Which is, for me, I get overwhelmed really easily with big tasks, but when I can build momentum by checking things off, I tend to work a lot more efficiently and quickly. I just round my little corners. Yeah, no, I used a ruler, but it's just because last week I freehanded it and I just, I felt, a little out of control like I might hate rulers but that that situation is a is an acceptable ruler moment for me all right so we got our little flippy floppy I might save this guy where to go I might save this piece and do like the tip in next week we shall see all right so I think I want to keep most of this the same I like the weather up here I like the way that this is built out, the only real difference I think is going to be just flip-flopping these things. And I think that'll be it. And I also was fine. I almost went to go track my time on Saturday and Sunday and it wasn't there. And I was like, aw, I haven't even checked things off yet. Oh, I did do a couple of these things. Let me check them off while I'm thinking about it. Because I haven't been back in here since I got home. I had to go to the bra store because I tend to live, I picked up RJ's lunch. We did the hangout and we're doing this. So now I need to food prep and do the decluttering I wanted to do. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so I picked up RJ's lunch and when I did some laundry yesterday, one of my bras finally like gave the, it gave up the ghost. I tend to live a very lean, a very lean bra lifestyle. I, it's hard to find bras that fit me as I'm sure many of you like, I think it's hard to find bras that fit most people. But I've found that the outlet, 
the maiden forum outlet that's nearby me um, actually can does carry bras that fit me. So my bra broke and the only other bra I had was in the wash because I was going to wash it. And I was like, I need more than one bra. So I went and I bought a couple more bras. But I tend to lean very, very, I tend to just not, you would think I would buy more bras, but like, it's a pain in the ass. I like that they're comfortable and I like to wear them because they make me feel like my little boobies are protected, but I hate the process of purchasing bras. Makes me so mad. Okay, so Monday is the 8th. And then I'm going to freehand, free ball this line. Did I try the store with the special underwear? No, Cassandra, I just went and buy. I wanted them today. Like, I didn't want to wait for bras because, like I said, I'm wearing the only bra that I had now. So I bought some more and they're going to go in the laundry today. But I will check it out next time. Tuesday. Almost misspelled that. Sort of spelled it wrong. Three, nine. And then... I'll just draw these lines in. Jonathan, you've never bought a bra? You're lucky. And my kid was going to go with me because they were like, I should get some new bras. And I'm like, I am rushing. We will go to the bra store a different day is that kid is very picky when it comes to bras and I don't blame them, but I had like limited time to run and just buy like an emergency couple of bras and then go pick up RJ's birthday lunch. So I was not down for the uh, bonding bra trip. Nine, 10, three, 11. Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a 40 B ever since my rib cage started expanding more because of my kidneys. It's just been a nightmare when my kidneys expand, when my rib cage expanded, when I was pregnant, my boobs got bigger too. And it was easier to find larger sizes with bigger boobs, but my boobs are not getting any bigger, but my rib cage is expanding because of the fucking kidneys inside of it. So. Almost Friday the 13th, but nope, Friday the 12th. So I think we're going to have to take Michael Myers down off the wall to sell this house, although that makes me sad. I'm like, you know, I would think I'd be excited to buy a house and to see that person have an oil painting of Michael Myers on the wall. <laughs> But yeah, that's probably not the business. Large band, small cup. That's exactly it. It's like, ugh. Jessica, my problem with getting bras from Kohl's is that like I'll find one that's my size and then I will never be able to find it again. And that bugs me. Oh, yeah, you're right. Friday the 13th was when lockdown happened here, too. Oh, God. Okay. I need one more line. How did I do meals? Yeah. All right. So let's get some, let's get a teeny, a teeny McWeenie. All right.
Emily, YouTube premium is fucking legit if you watch a lot of YouTube, though. So let's just be real here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to keep putting the hash marks in because I actually kept looking for them. So I feel like even though they were a bit of a pain in the ass, the hash marks were definitely, definitely a thing. So for those of you who don't know, each one of these lines represents an hour from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. because that's the time frame I'm just kind of keeping an eye on. I'm usually making dinner at 6 and then by 7.30 or so I'm taking a shower and like resting. Probably still awake for a couple more hours, but I'm not really doing much of anything because at that point my body has like given up on me. So this is just to track like how I'm using my time. So I'm not, you just saw my decluttering spread. I need to get that done, but I also need to get work done. So is there a stamp for the dashes, right? Oh my God, that would be so rad. Potassium pill check. Shit, I do need to take that. Hold please. Let me, let me do these dashes and I'll go grab my potassium. I just got blood work done though. Excitement. My potassium has now edged into the very lowest end of normal. Like it's still quite low, but it has edged into normal. All right. I'll be back in a second. Just let me go grab my potassium. Take your intermission. There's my big potassium pill. <laughs> if you're drinking water, drink some water with me. I do have a doctor's appointment, though. A kidney with my new nephrologist that I'm only going to have while we're in... Um, while we're still here, but he's actually a nephrologist I've had before. I told some of you the story of this about how my nephrologist, my kidney doctor retired and the doc, the doctor that, um, why did I put nine? That's weird. The doctor that was recommended to me happened to be the guy who was my nephrologist before he, uh, decided to, um, moved to Kaiser, which I didn't have at the time, but I do now. So I'm going to go see him. Somebody I used to see. Somebody that I used to know. Oh my God. I haven't thought of that song in so long. Anyway. So yeah. So I have an appointment with him this week. I have an echocardiogram this week. That sounds exciting, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, we have a phone call with our Denver realtor to start talking about the April trip that we're going to make to look for houses. We have to assemble a lot of our paperwork to start the pre-approval process for the mortgage. Like we've already had the conversation with the lender, but we just need to get some stuff. We filed our taxes, so, um, which I think I talked about last weekend, but flip flop ASMR, Victoria, you could tell I was worried. <laughs> it's California. I guess that'll be one thing I'm assuming and if you live in Denver, you might let me know. I am assuming that my flip-flops for like 90% of the year lifestyle is going to be squished. My, I never wear shoes. I just wear flip-flops, except for when it's raining. And then I wear Uggs or Fugs. They're fake Uggs. Yes, Christina, I'm moving to Denver. Um... As long as you can promise me I can still wear flip-flops at least some of the time, I will be less sad. 
but like I most definitely live like the I have like the permanent flip flop tan on my feet. Even now, even now, when I barely go outside, somehow I still manage to have the flip flop tan on my feet. Nice, Debbie. I never thought you'd do that. Get furry flip flops. <laughs> My sister has a set of boots that she gets every year that she fucking loves living in Bend, Oregon, where it snows in the winter. And so I'm going to take her recommendation on that because she and I have similar problems with our feet. But yes, I do plan on getting boots. I just, I want to make sure that my flip-flops will not be neglected at least some of the time. Because I fucking love me some flip-flops. The Jesse Jesse um is going because he's he's um the move is happening with his current job. And I haven't really gone into much detail about it on the channel, and I will at a later date, but again, um I'm only I am talking about as much I am saying as much as I can at any given time there is you know me I it's so hard for me to like I was like Jesse when can I even talk about this because this is not the shit I'm going to be able to like say I'm just working on a project that involves my whole house yeah like but yeah so I am taught I have I will give more information in upcoming videos just stay tuned um, trust me when I say you'll probably get sick of hearing about me moving over the next couple of months because my channel is basically, the bulk of it is me living my life and talking about how I plan my life and how things go and how things don't go, whether with my chronic illness and everything else. And so this is going to be a lot of it. So you're going to be getting a lot of, if you don't like moving content, then I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, the feet struggle is mostly bunion related. I don't have super heinous bunions, but my sister did. She had to get surgery. Um, I have enough of a bunion. It's basically, we both theorize that our bunion problem comes as, God, I can't keep track of what number I'm writing. I have fucked up on almost every single one of these. <laughs> um, yes, uh, Debbie, there's going to be a moving binder video this week. Um, but like Amy and I, my sister and I are both super tall. I'm six foot two. Amy is five eleven. Um, we're both not skinny people and we both have really small feet for our height. My feet are a size 10 in women's, which is not a tiny size, but if you look at dudes who have the same height as me, like what the hell was that that was weird um i have the front door open so um so if you look at my shoe size in men's i wear a size eight rj is just a little bit taller than me and i believe he's in a 13 in men's so my and amy's feet are also very small for her height and weight and so our theory is that the bunions develop as a way to create more surface area. <laughs> Am I sad to leave California? Yeah. Although I think I would be more sad if I had not been trapped inside for the last year. I feel like if ever I was going to be convinced that moving out of California and not to Oregon to live near my sister, because that would be the no brainer for me. But if ever there was going to be a time where you could convince me that relocating to a completely new state is a good idea, it would probably be after I had been bored out of my mind, not seeing, like I'm super fine not seeing people. Do you know what I mean? Like I am fine being like a hermit, but I have my limits and I have most definitely definitely reached my limits this year.
Oh my god. None of you stopped me. I shouldn't be doing this on Saturday. God damn it. Okay, that this is going to be a time, a time for gluing. Yeah, see, Jessica, you just stopped me right after I caught it. This is the delay. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to line this up right here. Uh, the printable, uh, Cassandra, the printables for my moving binder are actually some that I bought off of Etsy. I did not make my own moving binder. I have never moved like this before. And so I went to somebody who had more experience than I did. So I'm just going to line you up and cover that up and try again. <laughs> oh, God damn it. God damn it. Why aren't you working? It's because I was doing it the wrong way. My bad. This is just a Tombow tape runner. It's one of those little sample ones that you get um, when you do an order from Tombow. And I decided to use that because I'm trying to use it up. There we go. See, look at that. Ha! Much better. <laughs> so much of a tip and exactly. <laughs> Damn it. Ah. All right. And close. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I got this. Okay. Whoa. At least it, I wish it was the Tuesday that I screwed up because then it wouldn't look so weird. <sighs> so what do we got? We have one, two, three right here. I was wondering why it felt so strange. One, two, three. To be having numbers come right up to the top of Sunday. Because I didn't have to do that last week because I didn't do that last week. <laughs> Jesus. All right. There we go. It's fixed. Okay. All right. So that's done. And then I want to put in here. So you want to make sure this is correct. So we're going to put... tasks and then we've got dot one two three four five six seven wait one two three four five six seven monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday Wait, do I want the dot there? Yes. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing here. Tasks. And then dot. Let's see if we can go backwards. Let's see if I'm going to screw this up. Sunday, Saturday, Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. Look at that. I didn't screw it up. <gasps> Holy shit. Okay. I did flip the tasks around, Jessica. See, before the tasks were on this side. Now the tasks are on this side because I want the Monday to be the farthest away from the task list because then I can feel really good about the line being drawn across as opposed to a lot of my lines being shorter. It sounds silly, but it's the truth. And then, so this is my meal plan. 
which I should write in now because then I can put in for my blood pressure. So what do I have on my meal plan? Where is it? We have Italian wedding soup, which is a new recipe. I'm trying another week in the uh, cook once, eat all week cookbook. As soon as I'm done with this, I'm going to be doing some meal prep for the week. Texas beef chili, which I think Kat might actually like because Kat doesn't like beans, but this is like a beanless chili. Um, Asian beef lettuce cups. These are all new to me. But we have enjoyed so far the recipes that we've tried. Um, and then herb steak with potatoes. And then tonight we're doing chicken gnocchi soup, but I am not putting that on here because I'm making that tonight. Actually, know what I will, so I can cross it off. It's going to be RJ's birthday dinner because he loves it so much. All right. Debbie, are you talking about the soup from, uh, from Cook Once, Eat All Week? And then Meow. did he scare you? No, he was just he was in like the blind spot. Oh, not too far. Corner. So I'm glad you made noise because otherwise I would have punted you. Yeah, and that would have been sad for all of us. All right, so there is meal plan and this will be whoops keep hitting the microphone i'm sorry with my forehead what jesse monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday and we'll just draw a quick little line down the middle there we go perfect so we have blood pressure. We have all the things. All the things are on here. So what I'm going to do now is put the weather in, and then I'm going to fill my list in, and then we'll put a doodle down here. Oh, you use your own recipe of Italian wedding soup? Ah, yeah, Jesse loves Italian wedding soup. All right, so plans for this week. Where are we at? So, how did I? Yeah. All right. So Monday I have a patron post. I'm not going to be doing a lot of filming this week because I've got really, I got ahead, which is good because this week needs to be a lot of planning. Plus I am taking a course on Illustrator among other things. And I want, I'm, this week I'm going to be really digging into that as well. It has meat in it, Barbara, just not beans. The author of the cookbook, it's this one. This is the one that Lakin recommends, I believe. The one that she uses. Cassie Joy Garcia. Cook once, eat for three days. Yeah, it's not all week. It's three days, but whatever. Um, so I have that patron post. I have a call at noon. Um... I'm looking at this here. Sorry, spacing out. I'm good. Um, I'm going to work on module two as it drops because I want to spend a lot of time on it. Um, I need to do some Instagram photography tomorrow. Graphy. Photography. And I need to plan videos. And that's what's on there for next week i'll do this color coding in a hot minute once i'm done with my to-do list tuesday a video is going live so i have to be on for comments um tuesday is the day i am hoping to do the book organize like the book declutter and film it so that i have that for a video for you guys because it has been requested And then what else? 
I need to, I'm doing a patron live that day. And I need to do some planning for the Facebook group's future. Because if you haven't figured it out yet, <laughs> I talked about it in my power sheets, but like, I cannot deal with that right now. So what I want to do is come up with a firm plan for like, okay, once I move, this is when you can expect the Facebook group to be opened again. And that's what I need to figure out. It's not going to be a live book declutter, Jessica, because I'm going to be in the middle of like getting the kids are back in in-person school and there's some other shit going on. It's just not really conducive to that. Plus trying to have it go live would mean I'd have to do it on my phone, which has always been like sketchy for me. So yeah. Uh, yes. Thank you for the reminder of the imperfect foods order on Monday, which they don't have in Colorado. So I'm going to have to look. I think Misfits food is the one that is big in Colorado. Um, and then peer group email. Oh, it's also, I need to pay my Amazon bill on Monday. Just before I forget, because I will forget. Um, oh, Amy, good luck with your chemo. Carrie, the biggest reason I've been trying to get ahead on the, the cooking and this cook once we eat all week makes it easy that if I'm not feeling good, it's really easy for Jess or one of the kids to throw dinner together. And it's already figured out. It's, I love to cook, but I don't have the energy for it so much right now. And so I need to rely on them. One thing I'm looking forward to one day with hopefully feeling better when I get a transplant is to, uh, is to, um, be able to cook more often and like more involved meals. Wednesday. Um, I have some editing to do. And I need to wrap up editorial calendars for both April and May so that I can get ahead because my goal and you'll see an updated goals video coming out in the next couple of weeks where I'm updating my, you know, they have the quarterly refresh and the power sheets. I did mine a little bit early because um, there's just so much going on. And so a big goal for me is to be able to take like three weeks off around moving so that I don't have to worry about, but to still have stuff coming out on YouTube and for my patrons, because I don't like to take long breaks. I have, but I don't like it. And so even if it's a skeleton of stuff, at least it's something. And so what I'm trying to do is reduce my capacity ahead of time so that I can prepare. It's I'll talk more about it in an upcoming video. But the point is, I have to get planning now. Are Denver schools in person? Or they're both, I'm pretty sure, Jessica. Katrina, nope, that's what's going on. We're moving. And of course, there's the fun of moving during a pandemic, which is just... <sighs> um, I also have a doctor's appointment at... What time is that at? It's at a weird time. Is it 2.45? Yes, 2.45. I have a... Yes, I will be batching videos, Jessica. That's what I usually do, but not this week. Yeah, we're moving after the school year's over. Um, that's the goal. So I have a doctor's appointment at 2.45. It's video, so I don't forget that, so I don't drive to Vacaville. Because <laughs> that would suck to get there and be like, oops, my bad. It's a book club live stream. Wednesday afternoon. Oh, thank you, Vlogging Days with Janine, for the super chat. Love your videos. You're amazing. Anything to help with the move. I appreciate it a lot. All right. 
uh, Thursday. Again, videos going live, so I got to do the comments. And then, um, hey, I wrote down a note to, uh, to if I can get my editorial calendar planned out, then what I need to do is a content batching plan so that I have it scheduled when I'm working on what over the next couple of months. I don't generally play quite that. I generally only play it about two or three weeks ahead when it comes to production of things. But this way, I just want to be able to say, okay, this is how much time I need for this so that I can spend less time fucking around. Um, and then I also need to uh, write the book club email. And then Friday, kids go back to dad's. I have my echocardiogram. And then Jesse is going with me, I believe, because he got an appointment to get vaccinated. I have not been offered one yet, but he got the appointment, so I'm happy for him. So he made his appointment for the same time that I have my echocardiogram. So we can just go together. Uh, vaccinations in Colorado? I'm not sure how they're going because I'm not there, but um, maybe they're a little... I'm assuming they're less of a shit show than California has been. Um, because California's just got so many goddamn people. So on Instagram on Friday... I'm going to be posting a top three question. So like you would say, I will say, so ask me top three blank. And then you could say your top three favorite horror movies or your top three foods you hate the most or whatever, like that kind of a prompt. And I'm going to post that. And then on Sunday, when I'm doing my weekly plan with me, I will answer all of those top threes as well as any of them that you guys come up with in the comments. So that's coming this Friday. Just keep an eye on my Instagram for that. Am I nervous about switching doctors? No. Again, I feel like I might've been more nervous about switching doctors if my doctor hadn't just fucking retired on me literally the week before we got the news about Denver. Congratulations for all of you who got your vaccines. That's so awesome. I read an article about dealing with vaccine envy. I'm trying really hard to like be happy for people who are getting them instead of um, just jealous. <laughs> You're genuinely happy for me. I am genuinely happy for you. You're genuinely jealous. So I'm going to do some brainstorming for upcoming skill, upcoming, <laughs> ups, upcoming Skillshare classes that I would like to do just to get that out of the way so I can really plan them out for when things are going. Um, and then Saturday, you have wash sheets as per usual. Laundry. And the garage. That's Sunday. That's Saturday's job. Sunday, I've got my patron hangout. And alive with you fine people, which I just talked about. <laughs> there will likely be at least a couple of Sundays I don't do lives. During the move, I won't be doing a live on those Sundays. And in April, when we take our trip, I won't. And for the April one, at least, I'm planning on just planning my week out ahead of time and maybe doing just a traditional weekly, excuse me, plan with me. But I'm not sure yet. I should be able to get the vaccine. Um, my sister actually with her transplant got it, but she was part of a Johns Hopkins study on people who are transplant recipients and whether or not the vaccine works for them. Okay, so I've got all those things in. Now I'm gonna quickly go and color code all of them. And I'm using the colors from my time batching spread this week, which worked out really well for me to be able to match the tasks to the time spent on them. So, you know, having the colors change is, you know, I don't know how that's going to be. I don't know if I'm going to continue doing this or not once, um, 
once I get going, but for now I'm fine with it. So this one is for photography. It's the only one. I feel like maybe that particular like group of batching was sort of, I maybe could have separated things a bit better, but I'm not too worried about it right now. So this dark green is the one I'm using for administrative and that includes um, a lot of different like computer tasks. Comments. What did I put comments as last week? Did I put it as admin or did I put it as, yeah, I put it as admin. Okay. Comments. Um, planning. These are both, it's going to be a very administrative heavy week. That actually should have been something else, but whatever. I'm not too worried about it. All right. So we got all those administrative tasks colored in. Yeah, I do have the book. I have the book club email on Thursday because that's when I write it unless I'm slacking. <laughs> okay. This is like household things. So... And like errands that are like my doctor's appointment that are really, they're not related to the move. And then we have this guy, which is creating content that's not like filming. for lives. And then creative content that is on camera or such when I have to be on. So I'm going to put the book decluttering, even though I'm also going to be filming that I'm going to put that as moving related because that's ultimately what it is. The filming is just a bonus. And then this dark color is for moving related. All right. And then I'll do the same thing when I put my tasks in. But now that I've got those in, I'm going to draw my weather in and then I'm going to draw a doodle before I put my last tasks in. If you like the colors, they are in the description. It's a mixture of Tombow's and Pit Artist Pen, although I imagine you could find, if you only have Pit Pens or you only have Tombow's, I would imagine, or Super Tips, you could find a very similar color combination. All right, so it looks like we're getting rain this week. Hell yeah. By the way, patrons, stay tuned to this week's live because I got something exciting in the mail that you will get to see on the live stream on Tuesday. Helen, the thicker ones do shadow a little bit. You can see here that's an 05 but the skinny guys don't at all. Um, Wednesday. One of the things I'm excited about about the move Aside from having a bigger house, because God damn it, dude, is I 
I would like to be more experimental with color. I love color, but when it came to getting this house furnished and like decorated, I didn't put as much color in it as I might've wanted to, mostly because I've never lived in like a house that I've owned before. And I just felt really like skittish. And so I would like to create more art of my own, to source more art from other people. Like I would just like to add more color to everything. I was looking at different quote unquote decorating styles like on Pinterest and I swear like I've been I'm like Ikea chic right now but my dream way to decorate would be like a cross between traditional and like the eclectic like bo boho like bohemian kind of style Ikea chic? well we have so much Ikea furniture in the house I think that's elevating our style. I think I approve. <laughs> and I mean, I put like art on the walls and stuff here, but like I would really like to be a little bit less afraid of color. I've been loving the gray here. Your oh, Vicky, I'm so glad. Oh, fucking thank you. Spring forward. Uh, oh shit, when does that happen? This weekend, not no. this coming up weekend. Oh, I hate spring forward. I like being spring forward, but I hate the springing. Spring forward Saturday night. Balls. Oh, at least it's Saturday. At least we don't work Sunday. Yeah. Shout out to all of our friends in retail who work on Saturday. Yeah, I remember the worst was when I was working at TJ's in doing the morning crew and having to be at work at 4 a.m. Both of us went yeah. through multi year stages. Oh, God. Monday, Have, yeah, on our, morning at 4 a.m. Yeah, just so heinous. Yeah, Heather, your birthday. Happy. Is your birthday Saturday or Sunday, Heather? All right. Um,. So before I put some, I might just skip putting tasks in on camera just because my hand is starting to hurt and this is a lot, but I will draw a daffodil and I'm going to try and maybe not draw the exact same daffodil that I drew. <laughs> I think maybe I'll draw two big blooms rather than one like plant. So before I do that, I'm going to put like one going up and one going down. And so right across the center here is where I'm going to want my little box. And I liked this box last time. So a three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. One, two, three. So I can make it the same like width and everything as the other lines. Since every single like lined section on this page is 12 boxes wide. I'm just trying to like maintain a little bit of that symmetry because, because I am. Usually when I get the flu shot, I have a very painful arm reaction to it. Like my arm feels like it's gonna fall off sort of a situation. Sorry, I'm going quiet because I'm concentrating. <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Got a little little doodly situation going on there. 
I do love sunny weather into the evenings, Maggie. I do not hate spring forward the concept. I hate spring forward the morning. <laughs> like space balls, the toilet paper. podcast editing software do I use? Uh, I just use GarageBand on the Mac, and I'm not exactly the queen of editing my podcasts. You would think I would harass my um, audio engineer husband into it, but that would involve asking for help, and I am excellent at that. I think we had a shouting match about that one. I think we did. Week 10. We did, though. Your podcast Did I literally just say it's week 10 and then write week 9? Yeah, you did. I really just did. I really just fucking did that. You guys can tell I am tired. This is like a... <laughs> God damn it. This is just... I am just having... I can't spell... I couldn't spell Tuesday. I have fucked up counting on multiple parts of this spread. I'm just having... I'm having a fucking day. I also finally, for the first time yesterday, while I was decluttering my office, watched the new, the Greta Gerwig Little Women for the first time. And I actually enjoyed it. From what I had heard, I thought I might not like it, but I really liked it. I thought that Florence Pugh as Amy was delightful. And Amy has always been my least favorite character. Because, because I am an oldest. And while I would love to say my whole life, I thought I was a Joe, my sisters would correct me and say, no, Cindy, in fact, you are a Meg. So, and I think Emma Watson as Meg was actually the one I was like looking forward to the most and just wasn't that she was bad she just was kind of bland compared to the rest of them Meg and Beth were both like like Saoirse Ronan and and Florence Pugh I think stole the show as Joe and Amy like they stole the show and the Timothy Timote Timothy Chalamet was adorable as Lori but no one will be as adorable as Christian Bale thank you very much I loathed Amy during Little Wimp when I read the book, but I, maybe it was the addition of all of her like little feminist speeches that she had, but I just, I thought Florence Pugh was just delightful as Amy. Still don't like Amy as much as I like Joe though. Yay, John, that's awesome. And it took me a hot minute to like really kind of get into the way that the, um, the movie was storytelling versus like the straightforward way from the book and everything else. It took me a hot and oh, also I should say that, um, that Meryl Streep as aunt March was a, was inspired casting. That was like fucking brilliant casting. Meryl Streep as aunt March and Chris Cooper as, as, um, Grandpa Lawrence inspired fucking casting. So good. Oh my God. Christian Bale was the hotness as Lori. Now it doesn't help that like I discovered the hotness that is Christian Bale. Like I know that he's like a very difficult to work with actor, but I'm referring to seven to 1990s teenager Cindy here. When I say that I discovered the hotness of Christian Bale when he was in Swing Kids and there was no looking back for me. Like, I thought he was hot when he did the voice in Pocahontas. And that's a fucking voice character. That's how into Christian Bale I was as a wee, as a wee 
teenager in the 90s. Christian Bale, like, everyone's like, Leonardo DiCaprio. And I'm like, Leonardo DiCaprio, who? Give me some Christian Bale. But yeah, Swing Kids, Christian Bale was like the fucking hotness, even though he was a douche in that movie, but he was still cute. All right, so there's my little my little addition. And you guys remember how this week we were like, we need more color. And I was like, no, it's going to get filled in. It's going to look fucking rad. Yeah, this is the proof of that. Look at that. Look how sweet that looks. So this will look the same way at the end of this week, hopefully, assuming I keep up with it. Dude, I love McConaughey in Reign of Fire. I actually very much enjoy Reign of Fire. It's like post-apocalyptic and dragons and Matthew McConaughey being cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, and I am all about it. Anyway. Um, all right, I got to get going, you guys. Uh, I really appreciate you coming to hang out with me. Make sure to like this video on your way out the door so that you can make sure that you've liked it because that's just the thing I'm saying right now. I will be going live again next Sunday at 2.30 p.m. Pacific time. So make sure to keep your eye open on Instagram at Llama Letters for my uh, top three question if you would like to submit one. Have a wonderful week. I will see you all soon. And until next time, friends, peace 